Good morning and uh, yeah, welcome to another vlog. At the moment I'm still on the GoPro. As you'd have seen last week, we did, um, or last time should I say, we did Scarfell Pike. The legs are feeling okay. The wife's now moving, she's not too bad. She's a bit stiff, but yeah, we went up. Um, let me just show you what we did, just in case you didn't see last week's. Um, we went up there, we went up the top of the mountain, which is pretty good, pretty awesome. The weather's a bit different today. It was quite sunny yesterday. Uh, today we've come out to do waterfalls. Um, there's a waterfall, I can't remember the name of it. I'll try and find out in a minute over the other side of the road, a bit further down. But we wanted to come back here where we started yesterday because we've got these lovely little cascades of water leading up. There's a lovely little bridge further up as well. So uh, that's what we're going to do this morning. So uh, yeah, come with us. Let's uh, get some waterfall shots done. It's overcast, so it's perfect for waterfalls. We've got no sharp, harsh highlights. So yeah, let's make the most of it. I've got my Fuji out. Denise has got the Fuji X-T2. So we've got the X-T2, the X-T3. And uh, yeah, we're going to make the most of these little waterfalls and make the most of our Sunday morning. So yeah. Let's get going, let's get some waterfall shots. First few waterfalls on a play with. These are only tiny little cascades. I've um, got the polarizer on the front, it's a case one. Uh, I'll just show you what I'm using now. I know you used to see me use Lee, but the case polarizer, um, and I'm not a product pusher, but it magnetics on. So you can just spin it. It's quite nice. So I can go in with the Fuji, lightweight, a bit smaller, and uh, use the polarizer. So that's quite nice, quite handy, something I'm quite growing to. Um, yeah, so a couple of little waterfalls done. I'll show you these couple of little images from here and a couple of them from Denise as well. And we're gonna head up and find this little bridge. hoping you can hear me all right because uh, obviously the sound of the water and we're only on the GoPro I've got no external mic um, so fingers crossed and bear with me I will have the external mic later on when we get down to the other waterfalls this is where we come for the first moment there is another little bridge a bit further up when you start with this one I'm not too keen on the bottom bit you know like the I don't know what it's called is it a trap for stopping rubble and stuff coming down the river um, but I do like the old bridge I like the mountains up in the top with a sort of mist over the top of them I like this tree sort of framing that side of the image I actually quite like the larger scale of the image. So I'm going to take a larger scale of the image. Um, so you've got this nice leading line from the water coming up this way. Got the bridge and the tree on that side and then the mountain on that side. I quite like that. Um, 
on the Fuji the colours really do pop now I just want you to bear in mind that I know I'm shooting with Fuji a lot these days but I'm still a Canon lover I've still got my Canon I've still got my 5D but the Fuji seems to be a lot easier to use and I'm going to probably start using the Fuji more and more and more um, it's smaller it's lighter and just a lot easier to use um, but I'm not uh, I'm not bailed out on Canon yet I still will be using it uh, perfect moments and stuff like that um, but yeah this is this is a simple little shot and I'm going to concentrate on the cascade and I'm going to try and get this rock which is the leading line that water which is the leading line and just bring you up and do like a vertical shot leading you up to the bridge so let's get that one done Well, it is a kissing gate after all, isn't it? So, it's only right. <laughs> well, Denise has gone uh, running up ahead. Or oh, walking up ahead, anyway. Yeah, she's gone up to find a little patch. I spoke about it last week, if you watched that. Um, or last time. There's a nice little patch of waterfalls up there. It's got some really dark, coppery red rocks. So I'm gonna walk up that far and go and get them. But I did spot this yesterday, and you can pretty just about see it on the GoPro. There's a little tiny um, dead tree up there. Little looks like a silver birch type of thing. Um, and I really liked it yesterday, but I, I weren't sure about a photograph. But this morning, I put the longer lens on. Um, I'm probably at about 100 mil, maybe 110 mil. Um, and I've just got it cropped. I think it might be a square crop, or possibly two, possibly a square and um, a normal four by six or whatever it is. <clears throat> um, because you've got this nice mountain peak behind it. Uh, I quite like it, I quite like the mood and the atmosphere that's in it. Um, it may even make a nice little black and white, so we will see because it's quite contrasty. So we'll give that a go. Um, I've got the tree over on the left-hand third, prominently on the left-hand thirds, and uh, the mountain is coming up to the third, coming up to the top thirds. Um, but it's all about the tree. The tree's the important part, and there's a bit of bracken underneath the tree, probably the dead part that just seems to just anchor it in. It's quite a nice little image. I actually quite like that. It gives a nice bit of mood, and it tells a story from today, I think. Um, yeah, quite, quite nice. Uh, these fox gloves are looking pretty good as well, so we might try and find something with them in. But yeah. Nice and refreshing morning, got all the people walking up the peaks and uh, I keep saying to them, did that yesterday, I'm not doing it again today. So yeah, quite like that image, quite like that. Now anyone that knows these Fujis, or the new X-T3, the X-T3, when you, when you touch the shutter, you get a bright screen, which is your normal working screen. And after a second or two, or a few seconds, the screen goes darker. And then when you're composing your shot, that's a real pain in the butt. Um, is there a way I can turn that off? See like now, it's gone dark. Um, is there a way I can turn that off because you can't compose your shot within about four or five seconds So uh, yeah, if you know how to turn that off, let me know in the comments It might save me googling it and going through all the menus and everything else, but I want to turn that off It's some some sort of screensaver and I don't like it. So uh, yeah, please help Right, that's that one. Let's go and find the wife
Well, what can I say? Another stunning little spot. And look at the size of these boulders. <laughs> Pretty big, aren't they? Uh, this has stopped me. Look at this tree. How fantastic is that? Uh, only a photographer had noticed this. Anyone else would just pass it by. But the lovely arch leaning over the top, but it's all fully in growth. You've got all these beautiful, beautiful lichens and mushrooms and stuff growing all over it. Um, really, really quite a pretty thing. I've got the camera in quite low, close at the moment, trying to use it to exaggerate the foreground and to sort of lead it into the image. Um, I've taken a couple from a bit further back as well. I'm not sure at the moment which ones work the best. I quite like the arch in front of me, which is basically that shape. Um, and I like the arch behind because the, the greens, the greens are just popping. Um, like I say, I hope you can hear me all right. But the waterfalls, yeah, look at the lovely, lovely waterfalls. I'm going to come up, probably I'll come up here and try and use this as well, sort of to frame that image as well if I can. Um, this is seems to stop there, you can see it between the bushes. See this chief in down here photographing the red, is it the red boulder you found? Yeah, the red boulder is just over there. So we're going to do that. This may end up a two-part waterfalls video. Uh, we may end up making this a second, this is the first part, this is at the bottom of the Watkin Path. No it's not because we're not even in Wales. This is the bottom of um, Scarfell Pike Path. Um, we're going to make our way to the other waterfalls as well in a moment. So uh, yeah, we'll change cameras, get the other camera out, get the decent mic on the go and uh, try and find the other waterfalls and show you them. But yeah, this is really, really stunning, really quite pretty. And uh, yeah, I'm just hoping you can hear me alright. So I'm going to cut loose now get a few more images, set up for this red boulder and uh, I'll speak to you in a minute before we go. Right, let's uh, pull myself out of the um, midgey camouflage. Oh, God, they are absolutely mental, the midges down there. They're absolutely eating you to death. They're even eating her. She's been showing me some of her pictures and she's got some rather nice images. So I don't know if I want to take the X-T2 back off of her. <laughs> Try it, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I didn't take the camera down there, or I didn't take you down there with me. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get across that edge. I actually used a tripod to balance and stabilise myself because it is a bit of a ridge. And the last boulder I stepped on actually moves. It's a bit scary that one. Um, but yeah, that lovely red, you can see it down there. The lovely red boulder, um, really coppery red. And the greens, I think I've got my camera set on daylight. Um, and it's really, really popping them greens. I absolutely love that effect. So I will post-process it in the same way. Because um, when you're shooting in RAW, it's kind of irrelevant what you shoot on. I think it is. Um, tell me in the comments if it isn't. Um, but it's kind of irrelevant what you shoot on. Because I, I was always understood that the RAW image is the basic file, which is flat. Um, so having the camera set on daylight, I don't know if that makes any difference. All I know is all my images are the same. Um, so yeah, or cloudy daylight, I think I'm sad, not sun. So uh, yeah, really, really nice. Lovely little leading lines. You've got some lovely rocks hidden underneath the water where the polarizers just popping them, like popping the uh, the rocks from underneath. It's actually eliminating all the glare really, really nicely because there's no sunlight. It's really tame and it's really soft. So yeah, some nice images down there. A few portrait, a few horizontal. I'll have a look for the camera when I get back um, and uh, show you a few of them images now.
Right, it also looks like it's time for a snack. So we're going to get a snack. Denise has been shooting from here. I am actually going to get a couple of little shots from just here because the angle's quite nice as well. Put the slightly longer lens on and uh, zoom in on the, uh, on, the, on the little waterfalls, on the cascades. Um, so yeah, I'll get a couple of images with a slightly longer lens, show you them at the end. And uh, yeah, till next time, I suppose like and subscribe, tell your friends, share this video. Uh, if you like waterfalls, check out the next one, part two, because um, we're going up to Rutkins, isn't it? Ruff, Ruffkins, Rackins, begins with an R, and probably got an I in it somewhere. Um, but we'll go and head there now, and that'll be part two. So see you in part two. Ciao. Bye.